Hey, hey, it's a new day and welcome back to my channel. I'm Megan Fox and I have a really fun video planned for today. I'm just getting my hair finished up here in our new bathroom that it has been sitting, just, just been sitting, waiting to get styled like all over Thanksgiving, Christmas, the holidays. We had a baby, so it kind of put things on hold. Anyway, I want to get this room finished up. It's been standing here at like 70% complete for like two months. So today's the day we're going to style this thing and make it really pretty and functional too, of course. And then I thought in light of the stage of life that I'm in, um, just having a baby and everything postpartum and all, I thought we could talk about postpartum hair loss and things that I have found that work for me to make my hair look like it's a lot more voluminous than it really is. Um, you can trick people into thinking you have more hair than you really do. Um, I thought we could talk about that a little bit today because I feel like that's a common issue that so many of us women face, whether it's like postpartum or not. Some of us just have naturally thin hair. And yeah, there is some solutions out there. And yeah, I don't know. I just thought it'd be nice to chat about it. And why not? Since we're already in the bathroom today, we can talk about hair, right? Anyway, I am a Mennonite. If you just saw me put my veil on my head, um, I do have a video about that. Um, actually several videos that probably answer questions if you have about that, but basically it stems from 1 Corinthians 11. Being a Mennonite, that means we're Christians, and we choose to believe the whole Bible, and the way we read 1 Corinthians 11 is that Jesus is still asking us to cover our heads today, but it's also a very tricky passage to navigate though, so I totally understand how there's different people that come out on different places on it. But yeah, that's what you just saw there, and we can talk about that maybe a little bit more later on in this video. Today's been a good day so far. My sister is here. She comes like about once a week, and she watches the kids and does some housework for me. It's it's such a breath of fresh air, honestly. It's, it's, it's truly life-changing. Anyway. Let me show you this bathroom and the state that it's in so far, and you can kind of see what we have to do. Basically, we have two bathrooms. This is the kids' bathroom, and then we have a master bathroom, but currently, the kids' bathroom is the one that looks nice. I have not shown our master bath in over a year, probably. It's just awful. Like, I hate it, but we want to do it right when we fix it up, and that just takes money and time and supplies that are often on back order and things like that. So it's just not where we prioritized for this year. We thought we'll, we'll just get this bathroom done and just use like Lowe's level products and stuff. Still have it look really nice, but on a budget. Okay, here's the bathroom. I closed the blinds so the sun wouldn't blind us, but it's just a pretty much basic black and white bathroom with some wood touches. Um, I haven't done any decor yet at all, as you can see. But I did install back over the summer this like faux backsplash, which is actually just wallpaper from Amazon. Um, and then Josh took the mirror that we already had and framed it. Okay, and then the light, if I turn it out, you can see it a little better. That's from Amazon too. Same with the shelving, the hooks. You're, you're getting the idea here, right? Yeah, I'll link what I have down below. We have been using the shower, as you can see here, for the kids' baths and stuff. So I want to organize that. But yeah, it's basically just a white shell. Here you can kind of see where I'm going with the with the style of the room. Just a lot of black and white and then some wood to warm it up. I like to make a vision board for every room so I can kind of just see how things will look when they're all put together. As you can see, it's been up for a long time and it's already warped. <laughs> and yeah, here's the vanity. Josh has an Amish guy. He sources his stuff from really good prices. But, and then here, oh guys, this is what the state, this is what happens when you have a husband who's rummaging around for meds and stuff. It just doesn't stay organized. As you can see, I had good intentions but it needs to be reorganized again. And down here's some stuff I've been collecting to put in the bathroom and a Brook linen box that just arrived. I'm so excited to be working with them on this video. So yeah, you'll see that a little bit later. But yeah, I have my work cut out for me today. But yeah, I really don't think it'll take that long. It's a small space and I don't have a ton. I wanna keep it pretty minimal and clean. So anyway, you guys can go ahead and hit that like button or subscribe if you have not yet. And let's get started on this bathroom makeover, facelift. I'm not sure what we're calling this yet, but yeah, let's go.
to eight years and we've had all kinds of towels and wash calls on our registry, you know, and we've been using those for eight years. <laughs> I don't know at what point it's time to get new stuff. I decided it was probably like three years ago. <laughs> so I have been on a journey to just like replace some of those like, yeah, the stuff we got from our wedding that's like been worn out. Starting with our towels in our bathrooms. Like I said, I'm working with Brooke Linden on this video. They have over 80,000 five-star reviews, which is incredible. And I got their towels, which are 100% Turkish cotton. Actually, I didn't just get their towels. I got a whole bath set um, to save some money because then it comes with washcloths, bath sheets, hand towels, and a bath mat. And you can like mix and match their, your colors on there. And I just wanted to some kind of like neutral colors. They have like very plush towels. And then they also have like their waffle knit, which is what I wanted to go for because um, it like really absorbs really well and it's still super soft and I just love, I just love texture in a bathroom. I feel like bathrooms are so like slick and sleek and clean that it's nice to have some texture added if you can. So before I show you what I picked out, um, I just wanted to let you know that Brooke Linen has a code right now that you guys can get $20 off of a purchase of $100 or more and that is completely site wide so even their bedding lines and that stuff. Um, I went with their dark caramel towels just to add some color and then also you know very easy to clean and then I got the hand towels in white they have cream as well if you wanted that and then the washcloths again look at them they're such a nice size and I got these in the dark caramel as well anyway I've already been digging through the box but they come packaged very nicely folded <laughs> then it tells you how to care for them these are 100% Turkish cotton as well so that's really nice and then there's also a bath mat as well, and it's very washable. You can just throw it right into the wash, so that's really nice too. And I decided to try something a little different. I've seen this in different bathrooms and it looks so luxurious. We'll see if it sticks around, but I'm gonna roll them, the bath sheets and stuff, and put them in a basket. And then Ivani can fold. She can fold towels kind of, but she it's easier to roll them anyway. So she can put them in here, and then I'll store them in the bottom of the closet too, so they can easily reach them and get their own towels. And I wanted to work with Brooklyn because they have such luxurious products at very, very reasonable prices. They actually take out the middleman, which is the reason they can offer such premium products for such a good price. But like I said, to save some money, I got the move-in bundle with their bath sheets. And on their website, you can mix and match all the colors. You can get, you know, a different color hand towel from a different color washcloth, etc., etc. So yeah, I know you'll have fun picking out what you want on there. Oh, I love it. It looks so pretty. Definitely go on their website and check it out. I know you guys find something that will like fit your style. Yeah, I just love how not only how it looks, but also how they feel. And you guys can't feel that through the camera, but I'm sure you can kind of tell just by looking. These are so soft and feel very high end. So thank you, Brooke Linden, for working with me and for giving me that code. Megan Fox will get you $20 off of any order over $100. So yeah, look into them for all your bedding or bath needs for sure. And these are the bath sheets, so you can get a feel for the size. <laughs> can you fit it all on the screen? Okay, here's the final product. I actually really like it. I think it looks nice and clean. I'll try to show it to you without giving you too many shots of <laughs> me there, you know? But this is my little setup behind the toilet. This is from Target. This is from Joanne Fabrics, actually. This I got on Etsy, the pompous grass, also from Target. This is a candle from my own Fox Sparrow line. MeganFoxandLuck.com, subtle plug, <laughs> go check it out. And then the shelves themselves are from Amazon. And then I like how it looks like leather. It's not, but yeah, Josh installed them and I think they look really nice and they look modern, but they still look warm. Sometimes modern things can look really cold and harsh and it's not a lot of color, just a lot of texture and that's kind of what I'm going for in this bathroom. The shelving is from Amazon and then this toilet actually in this bathroom used to be yellow. Praise the Lord, it's now white. <laughs> and then I just think aloe vera is like the perfect plant to put in a bathroom because you can use it on like cuts and stuff. And I think there'll be enough sunlight from the window. We'll see how it does up here. And then I have two soap dispensers from Amazon. <clears throat> I love the amber glass of the jars. And then this is like a little soap tureen and I just have some bar soap on here that we'll probably, let's be honest, never use, but it looks cute right there in the bathroom. A Brooklyn and hand towel over here. I love the minimal little bar 
towel holder bracket, whatever you call it. I think it looks really nice. The bathtub is clean and organized. And then on the hooks, I have put some towels. They won't always be like this. We'll just use these hooks for drying, you know, wet towels. But I just did that to style it up a little bit and give it some texture in the bathroom. Okay, originally what I wanted to do was make the vanity wood and then the floor like a white tile, but that was like the expensive option. So instead we got a nice, really affordable white vanity and then we brought in the wood element with the flooring. Um, Josh got this, I think it was from Lowe's too, and it was, yeah, he just laid it right in and it's perfect for bathrooms, he says, so that should work out really good. Again, here is my Brooklinen bath mat. And then we just have black fixtures throughout the shower. I love the shower head. I'm very jealous that it's not in my shower too. And like I said, I pretty much just went on Lowe's and Home Depot and Amazon and just picked out whatever was like the best prices, but also something that I liked. And you can, you can make a bathroom that looks like very modern and fresh for not a ton of money, so I was happy to do that, at least here in the kids' bathroom. I don't know if I really showed you a good detail of the countertop, but it's just like white with speckles. Um, it was basically like four options I could pick from, so uh, this works, you know, I'm happy with it. And then here is my closet. Looks much nicer, as you can see. <laughs> Maybe someday I will take the time to make labels with my Cricut machine, but for now this works. Hopefully people will take time to read the labels and put things back where they belong, but you know, honestly, I'm probably just as guilty as <laughs> everybody else. Okay, I think this angle works, but anyway, now that I've shown you the bathroom, I thought we could chat a little bit about hair care, and especially if you have like postpartum hair loss or have like thinner hair like I do, and I don't think I have postpartum hair loss yet from my baby who's two months old. I don't think it's kicked in yet, but um, I know it will eventually, and Hopefully this doesn't happen again, but I don't usually have like bald spots or anything like that. My hair just overall feels a lot thinner um, as you know, the hair you've been holding on to kind of falls out. So there are a few things I've learned over the years. I've been styling my hair up and off of my face under a veil for, oh my, for like 15 years. So I have learned some tricks and any of you Mennonite ladies that are watching, I think this will be helpful for you, but also just if you, you know, have thinner hair in general. So the first tip I have is actually something I don't do and that is I don't wash my hair a ton. I'll wash it every four to five days. So usually twice a week, never more than that. And I just feel like the less I handle my hair, the better, if it makes sense. You know, every time you're like brushing it or washing it or, you know, handling it, it's bound to break quicker. And so I just, I don't wash it as often. And then also I don't brush it really that much either. Um, and definitely don't ever brush it while it's wet because that's when it's the most fragile. My cousin actually taught me to just like finger comb my hair and I feel like that actually has been a really good tip for my hair, maybe not for yours, but I feel like anytime I like brush and comb it a lot, you know, that's when things come out. Um, just brushing it lightly here and there is I don't know, kind of the most that I will do. And then as far as like shampoos and stuff that I use, I like to go, I found that with my hair, I can't just stick to one thing. I'll do the same thing for a couple months and then like when the bottle runs out, I'll switch to something else. Right now I'm alternating between, I think a volumizing shampoo and conditioner and then also an apple cider shampoo bar that I got from my one friend from church. And I feel like I like that one sometimes because it like will strip product out of your hair. But then I also feel like it doesn't make your hair as like, soft as like using a conditioner will. So I kind of like to fluctuate back and forth between the two. I don't know, I found like, same with skincare. When you stick to the same thing for too long, that's when your hair can start to get, you know, uglier. So if you feel like your hair is not in a great spot, maybe just switch it up. I don't think it's that important what you switch it to, but just switching it up, I think gives your hair like just maybe some things it was missing from the formula you were using before. Um, I don't know, it's just a tip that I've noticed works for my hair and for my skin. You know, switch things up once in a while. And then um, another thing I do back to the whole like trying to handle it less is I put my hair up in a bun. I have actually a whole video on my favorite hairstyle with like the half twist. Right today I just have like a pulled back off the face pompadour type looking hairdo. Definitely voluminous, that's for sure. But I just use like these little hairpins. I get them at good store. These are like brown so they really blend in with your hair. And these are like two and a half inches I would say. And then I use those, but if you want to be even more gentle on your hair, which I will do sometimes, is I will just use like a crab clip and like don't use any hairpins at all and just like put my hair up in the back and this will hold it in place just fine and then maybe just use one hairpin to anchor the bob to my head kind of thing. But yeah, the less basically hard objects you can have on your hair, the better it's gonna help with like losing hair. I do most times use a ponytail holder, just these are what, the goodie brand, you know, like everybody uses. I do use these, but even better would be to just skip 
the ponytail holder altogether. This one doesn't have a metal piece on, which is good, but if you can just avoid that altogether, that's again, another thing that's not rubbing against your hair. It'll make it less likely to break. Um, but my favorite tip for sure, and I know some of you are gonna hate this one, is I comb my hair different pretty much every day. Um, I'll part it in the middle, I'll part it on the left side, on the right side, I won't part it at all, I'll pull it straight back. Yeah, I just try to change it up a lot. I'll do a twist, do a braid. Um, just varying things up is gonna help you from creating like, not only a bald spot or something, if you're always pulling your hair at the same spot, but also it's gonna give your hair more volume because if it was laying this direction, you know, on Monday, when you go and comb it on Tuesday this way, the hair was used to going that way yesterday, so now it will like stand up a little bit more and be a little more voluminous when you comb it the opposite direction. I mean, it makes sense. <gasps> Maybe the way I'm explaining it is not making great sense, but I think you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, definitely change it up in that department as well. So not just the products you use, but also the hairstyle itself. Um, and maybe you don't put your hair up like me, but I feel like a lot of you are just rocking the mom bun most days. Um, maybe make it low some days and higher other days and stuff like that so it's not like rubbing on your head and like taking hair along with it. That would be terrible. We want healthy hair and we want it to look like we have enough of it, you know, especially if you have thinner hair. Another thing I will say is learn to style your hair whether it is damp or dry. I wouldn't style it wet, that's probably not smart, but even damp or dry, rather than using a hair dryer and drying your hair out and stuff, I definitely, I don't even own a hair dryer and I definitely think that helps with, again, handling your hair less and then not putting damaging heat on it as well. And I don't know, it's also just really nice to learn how to do it both ways because, yeah, because then you don't have to wash your hair as often. I know some people that wash their hair every day because they don't know how to style it otherwise. Um, and so I would definitely say try to steer away from that. And if this sounds like a daunting thing, if you're like me, you're not away in the public eye every day. So those days that you're home, it's okay if your hair doesn't look as amazing as it would maybe when you go out. Try some of these things out then when you're not going to be around a lot of people, you know. Part it at a different spot or comb it while it's dry if you're not used to that, you know, and just practice, experiment. And I know that I felt for myself, like back when I was a teenager, I was always experimenting all the time. And then as I got older, you know, you can kind of just fall into your ways. And I think that's not only is it it's not very fun, but also it can be damaging to your hair if you're always combing, combing it the exact same way every single time. If you don't like that tip to try new hairstyles pretty often, at least when you go to bed at night, maybe try something then. Um, I don't know what you do when you sleep. Do you just let it go wild or what you do? But if you pull it back, maybe pull it back with a part on the opposite side overnight at least, so that when you wake up in the morning, your hair can be then combed the other direction and it'll look more voluminous, a little less uh, maybe intimidating of a tip. So I would like to know, I know a few of you that watch are men at night, but I know a lot of you are not. I would like to know down below your like go-to everyday hairstyle. Is it just hanging? Is it a ponytail? Is it a mom bun? Do you like blow dry and style your hair every day? I don't know. I would love to know what you guys do for the most part. I feel like sometimes the communities on YouTube can make it feel like every day we all get up, we get our makeup on and our hair styled and like I'm pretty sure that's not the reality for most people, so I'd love to know. But in the spirit of being 100% honest, I do comb my hair every morning. It's not just when I'm on camera or you know when I'm on YouTube. I, for myself, just can't get things done if it's not up and out of my face. And then also, I'm just like, you know, ready to go out the door at a moment's notice, or if I need to, you know, answer the door or something like that, no biggie, I'm already ready for the day and good to go right from the beginning. So that's just kind of what works for me and I highly recommend at least try it for like a week you know, a month even, um, and see if you can create a new habit because it is, it's really helpful, honestly. And another thing I do when I comb my hair in the morning, I will like put it into a ponytail and then I will like push my hair front a little bit so that it's not like pulled straight back into the ponytail holder, but just like giving it a little bit of like zhuzh, <laughs> pushing it front a little will make, make it feel a little more puffy. And then if nothing else really works and you want to like stop, I only do this for like special occasions and stuff, but if you want to add more volume to your hair and also make your hair be more obedient like if you're trying to style it a specific way i really like this puff me volumizing spray it was actually recommended to me on instagram um, i saw a girl recommending it hair by hope mckenzie i think she does a lot of mennonite hairstyles too and stuff so i love following her page and there's two kinds there's the white bottle and the pink one she recommended the pink one for whatever reason that's just the one i have and i feel like it just adds some grit 
to your hair so that you can like, you know, make a braid or a twist or something like that. And it just like, yeah, gives your hair some like dirt in it or like texture if your hair is like super fine and hard to work with after you wash it. So yeah, I like having this in my back pocket for mostly special occasions. But yeah, it's called a dry texturing spray and I feel like it also adds some volume. So yeah, let me know down below what is your go-to hairstyle. I would love to know. And also, would you like to see me um, do another hair tutorial sometime. I've done one, but I comb my hair in like the same five ways all the time And I feel like most of those tutorials are out there already But if you'd like to see how I get this look or maybe a different look Let me know and um, maybe I could include that in a future vlog or something like that But yeah, let's just be kind to our hair especially in the winter I feel like it can get so dry and brittle and yeah, it's just nice to take that extra time to care for it and you know, it always pays off in the end and you have better looking hair, right? Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video and for checking out my bathroom with me. Also, thank you to Brooke Linen and use my code Megan Fox for $20 off a purchase of over $100 and yeah, get yourself some luxurious bath towels or bed sheets or whatever. And yeah, I think that is all for today. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everyone. We won. Healthy volume.